Beginning motion design, must know techniques. Hey everyone, and welcome to Beginning Motion Design, Must Know Techniques. I'm Noel, animator, designer, director, teacher, occasional wearer of neckties, friend of cats, pretty lousy drummer, and lover of all things related to chocolate. Hello, but enough about me. What the heck are we doing today? Well, a lot of fun things, I promise. Or at least some fun things, I hope. Um, I definitely am going to say boop a lot, which is kind of fun. Also, I'm going to teach you how to animate in After Effects from beginning to end, which actually is really awesome. But I'm going to have to talk about math for like 30 seconds, so that's obviously a bummer. However, none of that is going to be on the final exam. After that, I'm going to animate an entire scene while you watch and give you a ton of tips and tricks and techniques along the way. And as an added bonus, I don't want to promise, but I'm pretty sure my cat Sebastian is going to make a special appearance later on. Sound good? Let's do this. To begin with, let me just say that literally animation means liveliness or to bring life to, which is really beautiful. but not actually that useful. I like to think of animation as change plus time. Because without change over time, there's just really no animation. Okay, so change plus time equals animation. Hold that thought, I'll come back to it. So when you first launch After Effects, you're going to kind of get this launch screen. And what I want you to go ahead and do is just press New Project. All right, so here we are in the After Effects interface. And I know it's kind of big and looks kind of complicated and stuff, but don't worry about it. If you know Photoshop or Illustrator or Premiere, I think you have a leg up on this because a lot of the buttons and tools and things are kind of similar. And so right away, you have an advantage. I'm going to go up here to what's known as the project window, and I'm going to press this button here to create a new composition. Now this is going to open a composition settings window first, and I think HDTV 1080 2997, this preset, uh, is going to be the one that defaults for you. That's the one that I'd like to use right now because it's kind of just sort of the normal one for US TV. It's 1920 by 1080, 29.97 frame rate, but don't really worry about that, okay? I'm just going to press OK. Now this is a composition. Uh, in After Effects, that's where you do your work. It consists of this composition window, which is just kind of your screen where the action's gonna happen, and this timeline down here, which is where you do a lot of the work as well, okay? The timeline and the viewing window are your primary spots that you're gonna be looking in After Effects. Now what I'm gonna do is, this actually, just full screen of black, is actually, if I press this button here to show the transparency, You'll see it's actually transparent back there in reality. So what I want to do is kind of fill that up at first by making a new solid, or what's known as a solid in After Effects, which is just a full screen of color. So I'm going to press Command-Y. I'm on a Mac, so Command-Y. And that's going to open these solid settings. And let me pick some nice color here. Um, great. And I'm just going to hit OK. OK, and now you can see that there's a full screen of color there. That's this blue that I chose. And down here, source name is medium gray blue solid. And this bar here, which is red in this case, uh, represents that layer in the timeline, OK? So what I want to do here is select this layer and twirl down on this kind of small arrow here. And see, there's kind of a folder here uh, that says transform. I want to twirl down on that as well, OK? And right here, you have the five basic transform properties in After Effects. A uh, different and more relevant way of saying that is these are the most five, these are the five most basic ways that you can change any layer in After Effects, okay? And these are all really important. And today, these are gonna be the focus of what I wanna talk about today. Um, I'll start by just mentioning that anchor point is very important. Uh, objects scale and rotate around the anchor point. This right here is the anchor point. But anchor point's kind of different, and it's not something that you really animate, especially not as a beginner. So I'm going to kind of skip over that, and I want to talk about position, scale, rotation, and opacity. So we've already made this solid, OK? But where is this solid on the screen? I mean, it kind of takes up the whole screen in a way. But 
What I'm asking is, where does After Effects consider this to be now, all right? And if I select my layer and I press P, we can see that the position currently, the position property values, these numbers here, have it listed as 960 and 540, okay? And already you might be like, what? why is it listed in two values or whatever? And so the reason why is because this is the X axis value and this is the Y axis value. And I don't wanna get like to be like a math teacher here, but let me just explain this real quick. So you've probably seen graphs before, uh, and these are laid out on the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis, and the y-axis, which is the vertical axis. And it might be something like the cost of cattle going up, you know, between 1972 and 1982 or something, uh, you know, a graph. In any case, the x and y axes is how After Effects lists the position on screen of any object, okay? so. For example, in a 1920 by 1080 composition, represented here by this white box, okay, After Effects counts the pixels starting at the upper left corner, okay, from zero all the way across to 1920 over here, and from zero all the way down to 1080 here on the y-axis. Again, y-axis and x-axis, right? Right in the middle of the comp is 960 by 540, and that's where our solid is because half of 1920 is but 960 and half of 1080 is 540 okay so basically as we measure from 0 to 1920 we go halfway to 960 and as we go from 0 to 1080 we go halfway to 540 okay that's i promise the only time i'm going to talk about math this whole time okay moving on to scale let me go ahead and select my layer and press s okay and now we can see the scale values for that layer S for scale. What you can see right away is that scale values are also listed in X and Y proportions, okay? And then there's this chain thing here, which you can kind of unchain that allows you to adjust these individually. For example, if it's chained and I scale this down, oh, and by the way, I'm just clicking and dragging here while holding down. That's how I'm manipulating these values here. Okay, I'm gonna undo that. You could also, by the way, like click in here and highlight that and then just set it to whatever you want, right? So, but any case, if you unchain this now, I can adjust X and Y proportions separately. So I could like make this longer or narrower or taller and shorter. I could also, you know, once I find whatever proportions I want or whatever ratio I want, kind of click the chain back together and then sort of scale it in those proportions as well. For whatever reason, you can also scale things negatively uh, which might be interesting sometimes or not. I don't usually do that too often, okay? But those are the basics of scale. With my layer selected, if I press R, I will reveal the rotation property for this solid. And you can see that rotation is also listed with two values as well, but these are not X and Y. Um, these are whole rotations here. That's what zero X means, like the number of times it's been rotated. And then there are degree rotations here. So for example, if you wanted to set this to animate to two whole times in 15 degrees, you could like click in here and set this to two and click in here and set this to 15 for whatever reason, okay? Um, also, I'm gonna undo that. For example, the, the reason that they do this, I think is to keep the math simple because, so if I rotate this enough, you know, past 360, now it lists it as one whole rotation plus 33 degrees rather than as like, 360 plus 33 degrees, which would be like 393. I think this is just easier to visualize, especially if you rotate something like 10 times or something. The math would get kind of complicated to figure out in degrees, right? So that's rotation and uh, it's pretty straightforward. Ha ha ha. The last of the properties that I want to discuss is opacity. And uh, opacity is kind of a strange word that uh, doesn't necessarily always make sense to people. So let me explain it real quick. Uh, opacity is kind of the opposite of transparency. So something is 100% transparent, it's like a window. You can look right through it. Whereas if something is 100% opacity or 100% opaque, it's like a wall. You can't see through it at all, okay? Uh, and I should also explain that the shortcut for revealing opacity is not O, as you might think, uh, based on P for position, S for scale, and R for rotation. Uh, o was taken up by something else, so they chose T for opacity, okay? So if you select this and press T, you can see the opacity. And um, 
Opacity is just listed with one value and it's a percentage and it can only go between zero and 100 because you can't be more transparent than completely transparent or more opaque than fully opaque, right? So, um, so yeah. So if you click in here and roll down these values, you can see the opacity of this layer changing. And if I roll it all the way down to zero, you can see that it's pretty much disappeared from the screen. I promised earlier to return to anchor point. So let's do this. Uh, if I press A, I can reveal the anchor point. Uh, again, this is not something that you really ever animate, but you can. The important thing about anchor point is that objects scale and rotate around the anchor point. So just say I wanted the this rectangle here to rotate from this upper left corner. All I would have to do is grab the anchor point and move it up there, right? Like this. Oh, but actually when I do that, I move the whole layer and not the anchor point. So how do I actually move the anchor point? Right, so there's a tool in After Effects that doesn't really exist in Photoshop or Illustrator as far as I know, and that is called, strangely, the Pan Behind tool, okay? Here it is, it's right up here. The shortcut for this strangely named tool is Y, okay? So if you have your normal quote unquote arrow selected, if it's V, okay, then you can press Y and you get the pan behind tool, okay? Which should really probably be called the anchor point tool because what it does is it allows you now to grab this and move this over here or whatever uh, without moving the whole layer, okay? That's a bit of a mystery sometimes to people when they're first working with After Effects. But now I could, for example, rotate this like this, right? Or scale it like this. Awesome. So that's anchor point. Again, kind of a mystery, not something you animate, but something that you always want to think about where that is before you animate rotation or scale for sure. Animation is change plus time. So now that we understand the basic ways that any layer in After Effects can change, how do we actually indicate to the software that change over time. Well, essentially we're gonna say something like this to After Effects. At one point in time, my hand is here, and then one second later, it's over here, right? There's a change in time of the position of my hand. Now the way that we're actually gonna indicate that to After Effects is by using what's known as keyframes. So for instance, I have made a circle here in After Effects. So if I select this and press P, uh, I can see that the circle is at 960 by 540, which as you know now is the center of comp. So right now we are at the first frame of the composition, zero seconds and zero frames, okay? I can go, I can move around in time by sort of grabbing this, what's known as the CTI here, the current time indicator, and moving it in time. But if I'm at the very beginning of the comp at zero seconds and zero frames, and I wanna tell After Effects that the circle is here, and I want After Effects to remember that, the way that I have to do that is by making a keyframe. And the way that you make the first keyframe for any layer, for any property at any point in After Effects is always the same. You do it by pressing this stopwatch button here. Boop. And when you do that, you see that right here now, at that moment in time, you have a keyframe. That's what this little diamond shaped thing is. That indicates that at that moment in time, that circle is there. So now if I move my CTI to a different spot in time, like, one second and zero frames right here, okay? And I change this value, now I will make a new keyframe here, like this, okay? If I move this up here, I've made a new keyframe. Now you might think at first that to make a new keyframe you should press that stopwatch button, but again, that's only to make the first keyframe and not to make any subsequent keyframes, okay? The first one you press that button, and then after that, you either change these values here, or you do what I did, like, and move this somewhere else on screen if you're dealing with position, okay? That makes the second keyframe. Now, when I drag the CTI between these two keyframes, you can see the magic. After Effects animates between keyframe states for you. That's what it does. It says at this moment in time, the circle's here, and then later in time, it's down there, okay? That's what the keyframes mean. And that's how animation works in After Effects. And basically that's it. So we're done here, right? Well, there's a little bit more to it than that. So now that we have a little bit of an animation going, let me explain a couple more things about keyframes here. So first of all, keyframes can be very easily edited. That's kind of what they're for, right? 
So for example, if I don't want this to start at this point in time, I could either change these values by clicking and dragging and moving this to a different spot, or I could also just move it around here. As long as I am at in time where that keyframe is, it'll edit that keyframe rather than making a new one. If I was here and I moved this to a new point in time, I would make a new keyframe instead, right? But these keyframes are editable, okay? And they're completely editable. So I could also change this so it's over there, or I could, you know, decide that I actually want this to go the other direction and start it here and like have it move over there or whatever, okay? So keyframes are editable. Secondly, keyframes can move in time. And this is actually really important for animation. So right now this animation is happening over one second. But what if I wanted it to be twice as slow? I can take the second keyframe here, okay? And I can move that to two seconds, right? And now because I've spaced them out in time, the same animation is happening over twice as long, so it's going twice as slow. Three, I kind of showed this earlier, but you're not limited at all to just two keyframes. Like you can make as many keyframes as you want. You can put tons and tons and tons of keyframes in here. And I generally do, I love keyframes. So you're not limited to just two. And also number four is that you're not just limited to keyframes of just one property, right? Like I could press shift and S to also reveal the scale of this circle. And I could animate the scale as well. Like I could uh, start it at like 25% of its scale over here and put a keyframe there. And then at the end of the composition, for example, I could have it get really big and then it can like, you know, kind of start small and get bigger as it goes, right? So you're not limited to just like position keyframes or something, you can animate every property of every layer all at once and just do whatever you want, right? Finally, number five is that keyframes can be deleted, right? You, you could edit them, you could move them, and you can also just delete them. If I don't think that I like this point right here and I just wanna go from here to here, I can just delete this and get rid of that keyframe, okay? And now it goes like that, all right? So keyframes are really, really versatile and getting used to working with keyframes is a big part about learning animation and After Effects. Something else that I should explain at this point is how to actually play back the animation now that we have some, right? I've just kind of been clicking in here and dragging this around, but that's not generally how you watch the animation and that's not in real time or whatever. So uh, how do you actually play back this animation? Well, unsurprisingly, you just hit spacebar and then it plays it back. But maybe what you haven't thought about is that I have like about one second of animation here, for example, but this is a four second long composition. So right now when I view the animation, I'm viewing one second of animation and then three seconds of it's just sitting there and I'm waiting for it to start looping back again. Uh, oh, and by the way, After Effects, when you preview, you preview in loops as you're seeing. So basically, if I wanna get rid of this blank space and I just wanna preview this part of the animation where something's happening, like the active part, right? I need to work with the work area. And work area is really important in After Effects. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's this bar right here, okay? So you can see when I kind of mouse over the start of it or over the end of it here, the cursor changes and now I can kind of click and drag this and set this here. So it's now kind of an enveloping my animation. And now when I press spacebar, you'll see that I'll get a nice smaller loop of just the animation that I want. If you're a designer and you like to use Photoshop or Illustrator a lot, well, I think this next part is gonna be pretty awesome for you. I'm gonna use Illustrator to demo this, but it would work the exact same way in Photoshop. All right, so now I'm in Illustrator and I just wanna show you this simple sketch that took me all day to make. Uh, it's got a square and a circle and a lovely yellow shape that I've named Kyle in honor of my friend Kyle Hamrick. Uh, so a couple things to note here. Um, each of these shapes and the background are on their own separate layer, as you can see here, right? And I've named these very specifically circle, square, Kyle, and background, okay? That's all kind of important for what's coming up next. Now, in order to get our dear friend Kyle and the square and the circle in the background here into After Effects so that we can animate them, we have to import them, okay? So you can go to File, and import file or command I on a Mac, okay? 
when you do that, it's gonna kind of open. It's gonna say like, hey, what do you want to open, right? And then you find your file here. Mine's called Hi Kyle, okay? And now the important thing is, is the way we want to import this, okay? So if, if you don't see those options, by the way, you might need to click on this options button. But basically there are two ways to import into After Effects, as footage or as a composition. And there's two ways to import as a composition, but it really doesn't matter right now. When you import footage, what you're doing is you're importing one layer, essentially, like a JPEG or a TIFF or an MP3 or a video layer or something like that, okay? What we want is different. We want to import layered artwork and preserve all the layers, okay? That's importing as a composition. In this case, we were just going to retain layer sizes, but that distinction isn't hugely important right now, okay? So I'm going to open that, and now, up here in my project window, you can see that I've got a this is a composition. You can tell by this little icon here. It's kind of the same as this button here, which we pressed earlier to create a new composition. But also you have this folder, okay? And if I twirl that down, you can see that now I have those same four layers that I had in Illustrator. And if I double click on this, right now you can see that here in my composition window, it looks the exact same as it did in Illustrator. And down here in my timeline, you can see the circle, the square, and Kyle, and my background. You know, all the things that were on separate layers in Illustrator are on separate layers here in After Effects because of the way we imported, right? And now I can animate those things all separately. Okay, so I hope that makes designers out there kind of feel like, all right, I see how this is going now. All right, so right now I'm gonna quickly demo how I would animate this just in a pretty random way, just to show you how this works real quick, okay? So for starters, let's look, look at this circle, okay? I can turn off the other layers or I can just keep them on with the familiar eyeball button, whatever. So I think for the circle, I'm gonna have it move across the screen. So I'm gonna animate position and I'm gonna have it fade up and fade down. So I'm gonna animate opacity as well, okay? So let me do the position first. I'm gonna move it to where I want it to start, okay? Press P and then boop. That's right, press the stopwatch button to make the first keyframe for, for position, okay? I'm gonna to move to, let's say, two seconds, okay? And I'm gonna drag this across, and I'm holding down on Shift to um, just move in a straight line, okay? So now I got that going on. I'm gonna actually press N to, that's right, end my work area right here, so I can just kind of preview this. And now to do the fade on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually press Shift and T to show the opacity, that's right, of this layer. And at 10 frames, this is where I want it to be faded in, okay, 100% opacity. So I'm gonna go ahead and boop, make a keyframe by pressing that stopwatch button right there. Now I'm gonna roll back to the beginning and even though I'm in front of that keyframe, the same rule still exists. To make the second keyframe, all I have to do is I'm gonna click in here, I'm gonna type zero and I'm gonna hit enter, okay? Now this is gonna fade up over 10 frames, right? And then here at the end, I'm gonna go back 10 frames, which I'm gonna do by hitting shift and page up. Okay, page up and page down move you one frame toward and backward in the comp and shift makes it 10 frames. So shift and page up moved me here. You could always just like walk this back there or whatever. Uh, and then I'm gonna hit boop. That button right there to make another opacity keyframe at 100%. If that made you confused, you could also copy and paste the keyframe. Yes, you could do that with them as well to make another 100% opacity keyframe right there. And then I'm gonna to go to the end where the other keyframe is and I'm gonna dial this down to zero, okay? And I just wanna point out that if I hadn't made this second 100% opacity keyframe here, right? If I delete this, now it's gonna fade up to 100, but then starting here, it's gonna fade back down to zero, and that's not what I wanted. I wanted it to be mostly visible as it moved across, and then fade out at the end. So I'm gonna hit undo, so that I can put that 100% key opacity keyframe there, so that it stays at 100% between those two keyframes, okay? Great. Now what I'm gonna do is, let's think about square. I want square to rotate and uh, move up and down at the same time. I don't know, I'm just making this up and I gotta go quick. Uh, so I'm gonna hit P to show my position or I could just do this here. I'll just twirl down there and twirl down there, okay? So let me have the square start like here, okay? I'm gonna make a position keyframe there and then I'll go to the end of this two second bit and I'll move this up here, okay? And while it's moving, I want it to also rotate, okay? So I'm going to, that's right, 
press the boop stopwatch button to make the first rotation keyframe. And then I'm gonna to go to the end here and I'm gonna rotate this one whole time by clicking in here, making it say one and then clicking out. And now this is gonna look like this, right? I could play this down if you wanna see it. It looks like really exciting already. I can tell you're deeply impressed. And then last but not least, I wanna animate my friend Kyle here. So I tell you what, I'm gonna give Kyle the, the kitchen sink. I'm gonna twirl this down and my transforms and I'm not gonna anchor, uh, animate anchor point. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll down here and make first keyframes for position, scale, rotation, and opacity by going like this, right? Okay, now I've got keyframes there. Let me just go to the end and do something, all right? So I'll move them over here. I'll even go back to the beginning and maybe I'll move them sort of there. And then let's do some uh, rotation. Let's have him rotate just a little bit. And then also fade from 100 down to zero and scale a little bit down as well, right? So I just threw the kitchen sink at him and it would look like this. Wow, wow, that is good. And clearly I'm gonna win some sort of award for this animation. So I'm totally done with this, right? Well, I'm done with the animation, but I'm not done with the process. So now that the animation's done, I want to send it to my client, right? But at the moment, this only exists in the RAM of this computer and can only be accessed by opening an After Effects project. And that's not really how you want to send your work to your client. Um, what you want to do is send them a QuickTime movie or a, you know, a video file of what you've created, right? So the process of turning the After Effects animation that we have here into that video file is called rendering. And uh, the easiest way to do that in After Effects is to go up here to Composition and add to Adobe Media Encoder Q or Option Command M. Now I should say right away that this is gonna launch a different piece of software and you have this software ready. It comes with After Effects. I already have that software up and running so this is gonna happen kind of quickly for me but when you do this for the first time, it's gonna take longer than you think, okay? So mine happened really quickly but it's gonna launch a standalone application like this, okay, and right now this is my animation that I just made, okay, and what I want to do and what you should do mostly is just pull this down and I'm going to set this as H264, okay, now there's a lot of things to choose from here and there's even more that aren't displayed here, but H264 is often what I like to render with. Uh, it's great for social media, it's lightweight, and the graphics look pretty good, all right? So all you need to do is set that there and don't worry about this and click in here and sort of find a place where you want to render this to, okay? Uh, and just find that folder and just put it in there and hit save, all right? And then what you can do is just press this play like button. You can hear the most wonderful sound, which is the render chime from Adobe Media Encoder, meaning your work is done. You can click on this here, all right? And then double click and look at this, for example, in QuickTime. Wow, it's amazing. Basically, the way you're gonna pretty much always work in After Effects is importing art from Photoshop or Illustrator or other sources, animating those layers using keyframes until you think it looks good or until you've run out of time, and then you'll render through Adobe Media Encoder to turn it into a file that you could post online or something. That's pretty much it. That's the motion design process. I hope that demystifies it a little bit and uh, seems like something that you yourself can do because I know you can. Okay, so now that you understand how this whole crazy motion design thing works, I'm gonna show you the process from beginning to end again, but slower. I designed a simple scene in Illustrator to reinforce your knowledge of animating position, scale, rotation, and opacity, which I call PSRT in honor of those hotkeys for position, scale, rotation, and opacity, which I sincerely hope that if you get nothing else from this video, you at least learn those. So I'm gonna walk you through how I would animate that whole scene from beginning to end, and then, if you'd like, you can download that same project and try it for yourself. Sounds like fun? Well, maybe. First things first, I'm going to go up to File and Import and File or Command-I on a Mac. And I just need to find the artwork, uh, which by the way, you can download this same project 
right here on this page, okay? And what I wanna do is import as a composition. If you don't see these options, just go ahead and press this options button. Uh, basically, After Effects gives you two options. Uh, to import as footage, and if you do that with layered art, it'll collapse everything down to one layer and you won't be able to animate it, so don't do that. Or you can import as a composition and preserve each layer. In this case, I'm gonna retain layer sizes, which doesn't really matter that much, right? Go ahead and boop, open that up, right? And now I've got my composition here and I could double click on this. And I still also have all my layers up here in this folder. Great, so now, Basically, what I want to have happen is this arrow here to be kind of the driver of the action. And it's going to kind of come on from the side and grab this kind of cream circle here along with the, this blue box. And it's going to drag it over so that this circle lines up with this circle here at the end, okay? And then it's, the arrow is going to move down and it's going to grab this box here and scale this up along with this box here, kind of pull on that corner and scale it up, right? and it'll move over to this little handle and it'll rotate this circle and the handle along with this kind of Swiss cross here down 90 degrees. And then it'll finally move over here and click on this, which will cause the red circle to turn off to go from 100% opacity to 0% opacity. And that, that's it. Then the arrow will move off screen, all right? First things first, I just wanna set up my timeline so it's a little bit easier to see at a glance what's what. And I'm gonna do that by coloring my layers, right? So my arrow, what I'm gonna do is click here, here in this tab of color and choose like yellow. For all of the things related to the position section here, I'm gonna shift and select those all, click here and make those like aqua or something. All the S scale things, I'm gonna make, you know, I don't know, blue. Okay, all the rotations, I'll make uh, fuchsia. The opacities, I'll make uh, uh, cyan, whatever. Now my background is fine at this color, but what I'm gonna do is lock that so I don't accidentally click on it and move it by accident, right? Cool, so we're gonna animate the arrow a lot. It's the driver of the animation. So I just wanna make sure that my anchor point's in the right place, and I think it is. I think it's located in the best place. I could see under certain circumstances that you might want it to rotate from the back or possibly from its front tip, but in this case, I think it's fine like that, but I do want to press R and set it at like a minus 45 degree angle or something, so it's just got a little bit more attitude there rather than just pointing straight up. Right on. So I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna press position to show, I'm sorry, I'm gonna press P to show my position property, and I'm gonna move this over here, and boop, I'm going to press the stopwatch, that's right, to make my first keyframe right at the beginning. And I'm gonna move like, I don't know, oh, that reminds me, when you first open a new composition in After Effects, uh, if it's your first time opening After Effects or whatever, uh, it will set the duration of the composition to 30 seconds, which is what mine is set to right now. Uh, so to change that, I think this animation is only gonna be like between five and 10 seconds, so I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna press Command K to open my composition settings. And I just wanna go down here to duration and set this to 10 seconds rather than 30. Great. Okay, so now my composition's a little bit, uh, my timeline's a little shorter, and it's a little bit easier for me to see. Cool, so I've moved forward like, uh, let's say 15 frames here, just dragging my CTI to the 15 there. And I'm gonna grab this now and make my second keyframe just by moving this and setting that second keyframe, okay? I'm gonna kind of finesse this so that it lands, you know, like right here with it pointed at the little dot, right? Great, so this is now moved over and landed there. Now, I want this to kind of pause a little bit where it's not moving, all right? And additionally, I want it to like clamp down or to like click down before it does this move. So I'm gonna press Shift and S to reveal additionally the scale property of this layer. And I'm going to boop, make a 100% scale keyframe right here, the first one by pressing the stopwatch as always. I'm just gonna go like a couple of frames, like one, two frames maybe, like really quick. I'm gonna set this down to 80 or something. So it goes like click and kind of like clicks down real quick, right? I'm gonna go another couple of frames to finish out that pause, okay? And now I'm gonna copy this last position keyframe and paste it here. Now this is actually really important because right now it's got the same value between these two keyframes, right? Even though the scale's changing, the position is not changing, and that's what I want. I sort of need to make a keyframe here so that it 
pauses, all right? I'm animating a pause in a certain way. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move another like 15 frames or 10 frames or whatever it is, right? And now I can move this and it'll move over. But what I actually wanna do is select the box here and this circle, the cream circle, and press P on those. Because I wanna move all of these together. The uh, arrow, all right, which I was selecting just by hitting Command, the arrow, the box, and the circle, I'm gonna press boop to make keyframes, the first keyframes there for the box and the circle. And then I'm going to, actually I need those keyframes here, I'm sorry, a lot, so I'm gonna go here. Okay, and now I want to move in time, and now I can move them all together. Let me zoom back a little bit. Basically, I want them to move over so that this blue dot here is underneath this cream dot exactly, kind of like an eclipse. That dot needs to be moved up temporarily, so I'm gonna move that on top, all right? So now I'm gonna move down in time, and again, select the arrow, the box around the circle, and the circle, and I'm gonna hold shift and drag these over at the same time. Now, I need to kind of get in close here, and here's a little trick. It's actually gonna be kind of hard to see this. I guess I can see it closer up. But what I was gonna say is, you can always press shift and command H, and you can kind of hide the uh, Bezier path and all the handles and stuff and kind of click this over until it's right in the right place and that has disappeared there, okay? Now I can hit Shift Command H and put those back on there because I do like to see those. So now those three things are moving together and I can know, rest assured that they're, they move to the exact same spot that I wanted so I can move this P dot down now, okay? That was just my little way of measuring where I wanted it to go, essentially. But they are gonna move all together, the circle and the arrow and the dot, because I moved them all the same number of pixels together, right? Just so that's clear. Now, additionally, I thought it'd be nice to add a little secondary animation to the word position here while these move over to have that just shift like a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna select the word position and press P. And now to begin with, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna set it to the place I want it to start by hitting shift and using the arrows, I'm gonna move it over like two clicks over. Now I'm gonna boop, press the stopwatch to make the first keyframe. Now I'm gonna go to where the, you know, the end of the animation here, and I'm gonna click this over twice to move it back to where it was, and twice more, shift and arrow, so that it's over here now, okay? So now here, let me play this down. It comes over, clicks down, and it moves over. And the word position moves over with it, right? And you can see that little like grab down animation right there. Cool. So it's looking good. Right now, what I want it to do is pause just another couple of frames and I want it to release. So kind of the opposite of this scale animation that I built. So I can click here to, you know, select my keyframe for 80% scale and copy and paste it here. Again, this is like a pause. The value doesn't change between here, right? It's just at 80% as this moves over, okay? Then I'm gonna move a few frames back and I'm just gonna set this at 100 by clicking in here and typing 100. Great, so now it looks like this. Cool, I love that. So now again, I need to move a few frames down and I'm gonna copy and paste this position keyframe here so this doesn't move until I want it to, which is to start here, okay? And additionally, I'm now done, at least for now, with you know, these, so I can collapse these, okay? And the dot and the red bar don't need to animate ever, so I'm gonna lock those. Right on. So now the arrow is going to pause, right? Or it is pausing, and now it's gonna move down kind of randomly. By the way, the, the way that I set keyframe timings is I just kind of do this really roughly at first, and then I'll adjust later. So this is already good, it's got my pause, so I just wanna move this down here. And I'm gonna get in close and just make sure this is on the corner of the scale there, which is where I want it to be. Okay, so it's kind of like pauses, moves over. Great, so now a little pause. And what I wanna do is get my box and my rectangle here. And I'm gonna press S to reveal the scale. And I'm gonna make the first scale keyframes on those layers by boop, pressing that stopwatch, as you now know. And by the way, these have their anchor point already at the center because we retained layer sizes when we imported, essentially. It puts the anchor point at the center, okay? So they're already set. So I'm gonna move, I don't know, like another 10 frames or something. I could do that by hitting, uh, by the way, shift and page down, uh, and that moves me 10 frames. 
um, page down by itself will just move like one frame at a time to the end of comp and page up moves one frame at a time to the beginning of comp. So anyway, so I'm gonna have this now scale up together. These are both selected and I'm gonna scale them up together. Oh, and actually while I'm doing this, I'm gonna scale it up a bunch and point something out, which is important, which is if you scale artwork above 100% in After Effects, generally speaking, it's gonna look pixely and aliased, right? And kind of crappy, honestly, but because Illustrator art is vector art, you can correct this by pressing this very special button here, which looks like a little sun or something, which is technically called the continuous rasterization button, but that's a mouthful. I call it the sunshine button. And if you click that on now for these layers, you can see that this is now sharp and will stay sharp no matter, no matter how big I make this, right? So off, lousy, on, sharp, okay? Now, I don't actually want this to get this big, so I'm gonna delete these keyframes, but I just wanted to point that out and make sure that, you know, anytime you're scaling anything that is Illustrator art, it won't work for Photoshop, but Illustrator art up above 100%, you press the sunshine button, okay? Cool. So these are gonna scale up, I don't know, like, let's say 150%, great. Now, I can move the arrow up to the right position, just make sure that the keyframes are timed together. It looks like for some reason I changed these, so, now moving here, I can grab my arrow and just move it up there and get in close. Just make sure it's kind of in the same spot so that it doesn't drift. But there you go, it kind of moves over and... Oh, okay, so look, I made a mistake. Great, this is good, this is instructive. Let's watch this section down because I forgot to build the pause in that I've been talking about so much. Right, so it kind of moves over and immediately starts scaling. It doesn't like pause at all, it moves over and starts, which is not what I want. So that's why I had those keyframes in there. So I'm gonna move this, all right? And I just need to like copy and paste this position keyframe so that it pauses there for an instant before it starts to scale up. So now it looks like this, all right? Because you just don't move and then move again right away. You move and pause, that's the way a human would do it. Cool, so that was an instructive teacher error. Moving on, the next thing is I want the word scale to get bigger as well, but I didn't do it right away because Yes, you guessed it, the anchor point is in the wrong place. Right now, if I were to scale this, I'm gonna press S to reveal the scale, and boop. If I now go ahead in time and scale this up, oh, and by the way, I need to press the sunshine button for that as well, um, it scales weirdly, right? You don't want it to look like that, because these things are scaling up from their own center. You kind of want the scale to scale up with it, right? So I don't need to change this animation or anything, but if I go back to the start and I grab my pan behind tool, uh, shortcut Y for why is it called the pan behind tool, right? Y, right? Grab that. Now I can take this and I can move this down. And if I get in kind of closer here, I can hold down on command on my Mac and it'll kind of like click it into the place where the anchor points are of the other layers that are right around here, which is super convenient because that's what I want. And now when it scales up, it scales up like that, right? Let's watch that all down. Okay, cool, that looks great, uh, except for that the word scale gets really big. I think I forgot to adjust that, so let me just get in here and click and type 130 so that looks more like this. Yeah, great. I could go ahead and collapse my scale layers down because I'm done with them for now, and press R to reveal the rotation for my rotation layers. So my arrow gets up, moves over, so I gotta have it pause here for a couple of frames just so it doesn't immediately start moving, and then just needs to move over not very far, so I'll move it over here. I'm gonna get in close. Now this is gonna be slightly tricky here. Okay, so, oh, and by the way, when I zoom in on my screen like this, then the word rotation, even if it's 100% uh, scale, it'll still look pixely because I'm zoomed 1600 times into my screen. I guess it's not really like that in, in Illustrator, but it is like that in After Effects. So it won't look sharp unless you're basically at 100% of the size, okay? So that's why it's gonna look kind of pixely right now. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to mention that. So what's tricky here is that, okay, this moves over and needs to pause. So I'm gonna make another keyframe here, right? And then, so my rotation box and my Swiss cross. I'm gonna, boop, press the stopwatch to make the first keyframe for the rotation on that layer. And now I'm gonna move down in time, right? And um, I'm gonna rotate these. I've got these both selected and I just want it 90 degrees, I know. So I'm just gonna click in here and type 90. 
And then if I deselect these, you can kind of see that that just means it's rotating like this. Now, the keen observer might see that the arrow right now, it's gonna move in a straight line from here to here, right? And the box and is moving along an arc. So those two things are not lining up. So we have some choices. Uh, the best way to uh, do this is to add Bezier handles to this motion path section right here so that the arrow moves along a curved line that sort of mimics the curved line here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is select you know, this keyframe, which is the same as this point in space, and I'm gonna choose my Convert Vertex tool here. This is under your pen tool. Illustrator people know what this tool does. So I'm gonna choose this Convert Vertex tool, and now if I click on this point here, it'll give me, it's hard to see, but it'll give me a little Bezier handle there. You see that? And now I can start to make this a curved motion path. And now this is going to take a little bit of trial and error here, but I also need to click in here and sort of, oops, click, see, I messed up. There are two keyframes right here, okay? They're in the same exact spot. That's my pause, and I selected the wrong one. So I just want to make sure I've got the right one and click in there, okay? Now it gives me that Bezier handle. And I can try to, like, pull this out and kind of make the same path as this arc. And see in the middle here, it's sort of, it's not quite working. So I can adjust either of these two handles maybe to try to get it better. It's a little bit fiddly. Let's see if that works. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's pretty good. All right, here at the beginning, this needs to be moving up just a little bit more. Yeah, okay, that looks good. So let me pull this back so I'm not like right on top of it. And let me preview just that part of the animation. That looks good. What I would say is maybe it could be a little bit slower, so I'll pull this out a little bit. Yeah, nice. That looks pretty good. Cool. So, oh, one other thing is the word rotation as well. And this is kind of like scale, because when this imported, when we imported and retained the layer size, aka it just brought it in inside of a box of its own size rather than the whole composition, what happened is the anchor point defaulted to be in the middle, now we want the anchor point to be down here. So once again, we will press Y to grab our pan behind tool. Move this down here and I'm gonna command and click that into place when I'm really close. Okay, and now I'm going to press R on this and boop, make a keyframe, the first keyframe. I'm gonna press V to get my arrow back. And now I'm going to rotate this I guess I'll rotate this 90 degrees as well, even though it's gonna kinda of go underneath the arrow there for one sec, but that's fine. Cool, so now that's done, all right? And I need a little bit of a pause here, so I will copy and paste the last position keyframe, but now I can take my rotation layers and collapse those down. And here, here's my opacity layers for circle and square, and I can press T to reveal the opacity, right? Okay, so this arrow now has moved over. Oh, all oh, right. Okay, so there's a little bit of a jog in here, okay, which is very irritating. And this is because once you start adding Bezier handles, it's kind of like pulling this up. So what you gotta do is see how the path now goes up there, which we don't want. So I need to click on this last keyframe here, and you can see it's, it's got a huge Bezier handle. It's like once it starts putting Beziers on the path, it keeps putting them on. So we need to, once again, can choose our Convert Vertex tool and just pull this back so that it lands right in the middle of the keyframe. And then we need to do the same. I need to press Option so I can only manipulate this one handle and put this back in the center as well so I don't have that annoying jog there. And now, finally, I want it to move over to this, to the middle of this square here. It's going to pause. And what I want it to do is do that same, like, scale animation. I want a nice big press of this button here. So I can actually copy this animation, copy and paste it here where my current time indicator is, and now it'll get smaller. Click down, right? And what I want it to do is when this clicks down, you know, right there, I want this to turn off, okay? So basically, if I go back one frame, I can make an opacity keyframe at 100%, and then I'm gonna use this big arrow, little, sorry, big mountain, little mountain slider here to get like really close in my timeline. And I'm gonna go one frame, 
We're so close that this is now one frame, okay? And now I'm gonna squirrel this down to zero. Or just click and set it to zero. Sometimes tricky, right? So now let's check that out real quick. Yeah, now I think this should actually maybe wait one more frame. Yeah, I kinda like that. Click, cool. Actually, After Effects has a built-in function that'll allow you to do something like this better. That's called a hold keyframe. So I'm gonna pull this back a little bit and zoom back a little bit. If I just want this 100% opacity to hold here and then change once it reaches the 0% keyframe, I could select them both and right click and go to toggle hold keyframe. Now to toggle just means to turn on or off like a light switch. There's like no in between, it's either on or off. So if I toggle hold keyframes, now there are hold keyframes, they've been toggled on, okay? So now this, it doesn't, After Effects doesn't animate between, between hold keyframes. It just leaves the value at 100% here for as long as it takes until it reaches the next keyframe and then it changes all at once. So it essentially does the same animation. It's just a little bit of a kind of a more specialized way of doing it. So let me just quickly copy and paste this for a pause and now move this off screen. I'm gonna press V for my regular arrow. Just move this off, off the screen here, okay? Cool, and let's look at the whole animation. Right on, this is looking great. Uh, I just wanna do a couple other quick things to make this look a little bit more naturalistic and to make it look like the arrow is being moved by a human hand. And the first of that is to actually put Bezier handles on more of this motion path because you really don't move in like a really straight line like this. So let me just quickly add some arcs into this. So I'm gonna select my first keyframe. I'm gonna collect, uh, select my Convert Vertex tool and click on here to get a Bezier. And this, I just wanna put like small curve on there. Uh, I wanna click on this and uh, also put just a tiny little bit of an arc on there, just so it's subtle, but it moves in kind of like that, right? Then it pauses and moves down. And now this, I want it to move straight and it kind of really should uh, because that's what the action really calls for. But this move down here, okay, when it moves down here, I think this could have a nice curve on it. So I could select that, I mean arc or whatever, select it, and let's see, I'm gonna pull this up just a little bit. And then this one, when it lands, I can also select that, pull that up a little bit. You just wanna make sure you're conscious of which keyframe you're working with. Okay, this is good, that needs to move straight, and that's fine, this we've already worked on. This move over is fine because it's so short. I guess just this move here at the end, I'll put a little bit of an arc on too. So I grab that and I'll click there. Just pull that up, click there and the end. And I guess I can pull that like that. Cool, so let's, let's look at that and we'll just see what the difference is really quick. Right on, so that already looks much more naturalistic to me. What I notice now is the timings, okay? I just put the timings in kind of randomly, especially at the beginning. The animation looks really fast to me there. It's like, it takes our eye a second to kind of get used to something moving and where to look or whatever. So what I'm gonna do is select all of my layers by pressing Command A, and then press U, which is gonna immediately collapse them all, which is not what I want, but I'm gonna press U again. And U is the shortcut to show all of the animation all the keyframes in any layer, okay? So it's really useful. U for useful, all right? So I'm just gonna make this smaller a bit, move this up just a little. I'm just gonna grab there and move this up just so I can see all of my keyframes here, okay? I'm gonna do a little bit of editing. All of these, I'm gonna pull these back to make this a little bit longer here. Actually zoom in, now it's too far away. It looks too slow now, just pull this up a little bit. Yeah, I like that, cool. Now this move over I think is a little fast too when it goes you know, between here and here. So I'm just gonna slide all these back. And as long as you're moving all the keyframes together, it'll be fine. That's too slow. So funny. The difference can just sometimes be just a couple of keyframes. Okay, so this move over looks a little bit fast to me. Move that. Yep, let me pull, let me now uh, widen back here. Okay, so this is good. I think everything else is good. Maybe this last move over, oops, 
Just I'll move this last keyframe a little bit. Let's see that all together. Okay, cool. I think this animation looks great and it's basically done. I just want to do one other thing to make it look a little bit more naturalistic. Right now, all of the action between the keyframes is what's known as linear, meaning that everything moves at a steady rate between the keyframes. And that's not really the way things move in real life. In real life, if you start your car and start driving it, you don't just start moving at 50 miles an hour. You start at zero and you kind of gradually move up to 10 miles an hour and you gradually move up faster and faster as you go, right? So objects in After Effects kind of want to move that way too. They kind of want to ease out of their stopped positions and ease into a stopped position. Now, this kind of animation that we've built here with lots of movement and then pauses and then movement is actually perfect for this built-in function in After Effects called Easy Ease, which I'll show you right now. Um, it doesn't always work for every situation, but for this kind of animation, it's great. So I right-clicked and I went to Keyframe Assistant and Easy Ease, or the beloved shortcut F9. And if I do that, now you can see that the diamond-shaped keyframes are kind of hourglass-shaped keyframes. And check out the animation now. It's just a little bit more naturalistic, the way that it moves. Like, just check out this one area here, right? It kind of eases out and moves quickly through the middle and then eases in. I don't have a lot of time to go into it now, but definitely check out Easy Ease on your own and see how it's affecting your keyframes. So the animation looks great and we're done. We just need to render it out. So I'm going to go to Composition, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Q or Option Command M on a Mac. Now I've already got this uh, launched already, so it was very quick for me, but it'll take a little bit longer for you if it's your first time launching it. But in any case, basically you just want to, here's my composition, PSRT. You just want to pull this down until you get to, here it is, H264, right? Click on that, and that's going to be a really good way to render these for social media or for posting online or for emailing to people, whatever. It'll keep the graphics looking sharp. Just pick a spot that you want to render to. Um, and give it a name, whatever, PSRT, for example, and hit save. Great. Then you can press this green button to play it, to play it. Yes, the render chime. And you can click on this little link here and double click it and check it out. Amazing. Thank you so much for watching this. I had a ton of fun. And I hope you learned a lot and are eager to start bringing your own designs to life through animation. If you'd like to work on the same scene that I just did, feel free to download my Illustrator file from this page right now. You can change whatever you want about it, but when you animate it, please focus on position, scale, rotation, and opacity. If you want to post it on Instagram, tag me, at Noel Honig, and I'd love to check it out. I should also add that if you enjoyed today's lesson, you might want to check out my beginner level class at School of Motion called After Effects Kickstart. I don't want to be biased or anything, but I believe it is the bestest and mostest fun way to learn After Effects in the entire known universe, at least as far as I know. And with that, I am out. Ciao. Oh, uh, one other thing is that I forgot to mention my cat Sebastian. If you're a designer and brand new to motion design, the After Effects team needs your help. They are working on a new feature that is targeted to designers to help them animate in After Effects more efficiently. If you're interested in being part of the beta program to test this new feature, sign up at adobe.com go aeprop.